Mr. Stone, how are you doing? What do you want? Just a few moments of your time. No, I've got nothing to say. Now, go away. I don't want to talk to okay. you. Okay. Believe me, there's nothing I'd like more than to go away and never see your miserable face again. You know, my son's on his way. Now, don't tell Phibbs. You don't have a son, do you, Mr. Stone? Get out. Go on, get out. When the boys said you were still here, I said, no, you must be mistaken. This is my home, and I'm not being forced out. Tempted out, enticed. Forces when it gets nasty. And we're not there yet, are we? I live round here all my life. I've been in this house 40 years. Time for a change, then. You don't frighten me. That's because I'm not trying to. You see, I find frightening people very easy. In fact, it's a bit of a bore. So instead, a little gift. I don't want it. Of course you do. Hundreds and hundreds of pounds. You're bribing me. It's compensation. Well, get out of my house. Crisp 20 straight from the bank. You ever had a thousand pounds in your hands before? Don't you talk down to me, you shabby little trickster. What did you call me? You think too small, son, too shallow. You keep making mistakes. Do I? Like what? Like uh, <laughs> you think I'm scared of you. Well, it's me all over. Too nice for my own good. And that tatty letter. You, you hold it out like a begging boy. And you, there's desperation in your voice. Careful. Oh, big strong lad, are we? Well, I'm 40 years older than you. I've got one kidney and a, a few things wrong with my lungs. But I'll tell you one thing, son. I'm twice the man that you'll ever be. beginning to try my patience. I have a right to be here. Why would you want to live in this slum? It's my home. How would you feel if somebody tried to force you out? If someone was offering me somewhere better, I'd jump at it. Ha! Oh, like old Mrs. Jenna next door. Have you seen the bed set she's in? She's sharing a bathroom with a junkie and three screaming kids. Like you either take my money... I don't want your filthy money! Or you stay here with me in your case. Week after week. Making your life hell. Is that what you want? Your threats of violence don't scare me. And who mentioned violence? No, you're very clever. We did spell it out. If you know I'd call the police, but we both know what you mean. I'll give you another 500. That's 1,500 pounds. <laughs> what would that buy me? I'm not obliged to do this. And I'm not obliged to go. Why don't you make life easy in yourself? Well, I've got breath in my body. You'll never get me out of this house. Never. Do you understand? You've got to give me points for persistence. I've nothing to say to you. Good. Then I'll do all the talking. If you set one foot in this house, I'll... What? Go on, impress me. I'll get the police. You're nothing to them. A pathetic, babbling old fool, way past his sell-by date. I'm warning you! You know, you're really starting to bore me now, so I'm going to make this simple. There's a cheque for two and a half thousand pounds. Now that's it. Not open to negotiation. What? Oh, please. Spare me the fake heart attack routine. Jason, not a bad time, is it? Wonderful. That's what I like to hear. Anyway, I call with glad tidings. We are back in business. 
So get yourself down to Nightingale Terrace as quick as you can. The old man? Everything's resolved. Nothing to worry about. Yeah. God does indeed work in mysterious ways. Ambulance service, please. Are you a relative? No, it's landlord. He's moving into sheltered accommodation. I was just trying to help him out with some paperwork. Gets a bit confused. Is there any family we can contact? I'm afraid not. And um, what about the house? Eh, uh, don't worry about that. I'll look after it. He's going to be all right, isn't he? You never know. But I won't get your hopes up. Did you hear that? Sounds like you're on your own. Couldn't have timed that better if I tried. The old man's just left. Any problems? Went like a dream. All right then. So what's the plan? Secure the house for now. We'll sort out tomorrow. Not a problem, pal. Nothing ever is with you, Jess. That's what makes us such a good team. Hop to it. That bonus won't earn itself. What can I say? I'm all hearts. <laughs> oh. You come to gloat? And here was me thinking you were going to thank me for saving your life. <laughs> it was the worry about you that put me in here. You should have accepted my offer in the first place. I'm not moving anywhere. So get that into your, your thick skull. What, what, what did you do with Sonny Jim? Sonny Jim? Sonny Jim is my cat. Do I look like that SPCA? Like I've salvaged your things, the clothes that were fit to wear, your mementos. Now, do I break it to you gently, or do I tell you that your house is being boarded up at this very moment? Yeah, I think I'll do that one. But you can't. Think again. What am I going to do? That's the question I'm asking myself. Do you continue being obstructive, or do you accept this big fat check? More than enough to replace the firewood you used to call furniture. You can shove it! I can shove this pillow over your face. But why bother? Because nobody cares whether you live or die. Especially not me. Uh, package for coal. Oh. Oh, uh, thank you, but uh, there, there was no need to bring it. Oh, it's a plain brown wrapper with no indication of the uh, secrets within. <laughs> There's a difference between secret and private. Which is this? Well, private, obviously. Oh, come on, open it up. I can't stand the suspense. Package for coal, you said, not coal and stone. The last parcel I had was uh, a foolproof way of winning the pools. It was from uh, Horace Batchelor, Department C. Keensham. Spelt K E Y N S H. Oh, it's Radio Luxembourg. Do you know, they must have put that ad out 20 times a night. Oh, more. Of course, Norris here will be listening to the home service. Anybody under 50 will think we were mad. This foolproof scheme never worked for you then. Uh, I had a, a lot of luck in my life, Norris, but it was all bad. Mm. And your runs continue, and this parcel will remain unopened. I, I bet it's from the girlfriend. Look. Just because you insist on wearing a cap, there's no need to resort to schoolboy humour. You know perfectly well my relationship with Mary is purely platonic. Ah, uh, better last that age takes some keeping up with. Did you not hear what I said? Or is it the word platonic you don't understand? Well, if it doesn't work out, you can always adopt her. <sighs> oh, don't encourage him, Rita, please. <sighs> ah, I see that bad luck comes to an end sooner or later. Stone, Nightingale Terrace. 
Or have you thrown so many sick pensioners out of their homes, put all their belongings in a skip, and left them to die? Is that why you can't recognise me? You know, my recollection is something quite different. Far from leaving you to die, it was me called the ambulance. Full recovery, I see. Oh, yeah. Alive and well and living on your doorstep. We've got unfinished business, Sunshine. I really don't think so. Um, I'll call back later. Uh -huh. Ah, the blushing groom. <laughs> I was looking for you. <laughs> Hi there. Your bride is a grand girl. Now listen, we're having a farewell drinks at the Rover tonight. I came to ask the two of you along. All right. Uh, it, it'll take your mind off tomorrow. Uh, it'll give Helen a chance to make it up with Carla. She regrets some of the things she said after our Liam died, you know. I should watch you if I were you. You stand here any longer, you'll have your wallet. <laughs> hey, buddy, we'll be there. Thank you. Grand. What do you want? I want my house back, I want my life back, and I want my cat back. How am I doing so far? We had a deal. I give you a check, you cashed it. Look, you robbed me when I was ill. I want more. I want a decent price for everything you took. Take your disgusting hand off me. When you ever come near me again, right? You don't scare me, remember? Hey, I'll see you around. And next time, bring your checkbook. Has anyone ever choked to death on champagne? Oh, don't be horrible, Kevin. You're not a fan of Flesh Gordon's, then? I wouldn't pour me drink on him if he was on fire, no. Why, well, do you know him? I got to this age without really hating anybody. Then he came along. He managed to frighten all my neighbours away. Take more than a bully boy to frighten me. He did move out, though. Well, I had a stroke, didn't I? The second I was in the hospital, he got his thugs in, and they dumped all my things and boarded the house up. Here's Bernie. If you're worrying about what to get me as a wedding present, there's no need. Oh, I'll buy you a rattlesnake. But, one bite, dead snake. I should have got you to write my wedding speech. I could have done with a good few jokes, if you can't write the wedding. Well, I'd miss out on a chance to eat and drink at your expense. Don't think so. He'll be on his best behaviour, Mr Gordon. How would you ever know? Maybe I should come too and tell everybody what a charmer the bridegroom really is. I'm touched. How you got rich? Long hours, all on your own. Hard work. I was never afraid of it. What do you want? Or was it something else that made you rich? If you're here for more cash. Like being willing to stamp on people who got in your way. Maybe you should remember that and scurry back under your stone. OK. What did you want? Um, I thought you ought to be forewarned. You're senile. I'm not the only one who knows a snake when he sees one, you know. <laughs> that Maria. Oh, she's got your number, hasn't she? Maria's half mad with grief. Well, I'd better call round then. Compare notes with her. Yeah? What do you want? Nothing. You're lurking. No, I'm just keeping my eyes open. It's amazing what you can see if you keep your eyes open. Do you live in a happy world or a sad one? I'd be happy to see you get what's coming to you. Maria's delusions come from grief and pregnancy hormones. Miss your excuse. You come in. Yeah. You wrap up warm. You don't want to catch a chill. What did he want? Nothing. Will you take me for lunch? Wait and see. Come on, Sonny Jim. Sonny Jim. Come on, lover. Come on, Dindins. Foodies. Come on, lover. Come on. Well, well, well. Oh, no. <laughs> 
I've just been talking to my friend Mrs. Connor. We're going to start a campaign to raise the public awareness. Basically, we want to alert the people to the fact that you're uh, a murdering swine. Don't you dare speak to me like that. Why? What are you going to do? This conversation's over. Huh? <laughs> Thank you for taking time out your busy schedule. What do you want? Well, that's nice. Nice way to treat a friend. <laughs> I have a life, you know. I know. I thought you'd appreciate an update. Yeah. A certain widow went to the police. I think I've convinced them she's losing it. So why are you telling me this? I'm sorry. When I'm in the frame. That's when I need to know. Who's that? Nobody. So that old wine and woman cat we kicked out of the house. Oh great. Well played. He's not important. Not important! He's just seen us together, you idiot. Don't call me again, you hear me. I just didn't have the art to say no. Nor me. It would have been nice, though, wouldn't it? To get away. Who would you? Yeah. Maybe next year. Maybe skiing in St. Moritz. Or Aviemore. Aviemore's really nice. Are you sponsored by the Scottish Tourist Board or something? Kid is in hospital. Yeah, you count me in? Yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah, steady on turns. <laughs> Didn't mean you had to buy the whole toy shop. God bless us, one and all. <laughs> yeah, ma'am, thanks for this. She seemed a bit surprised. Well, I am the only one who knows how big your heart is. You fancy Philip? Yeah, I do. We didn't get a chance to finish our little chat, Mr. Gordon. This is getting very monotonous. Or maybe you'd like me to tell the whole pub about your henchman of yours and his, his terrible driving. All right, I'll see you around the back of the pub then. See you in an hour. Hello, Norris. Can I buy you a drink? Uh -huh. Why would you want to do that? I've just won a very lucrative bet. Oh, in that case, I'll have a port and lemon. Much of uh, Double scotch for me, please, then. Where's your lady friend? <sighs> If you mean Mary, who is my friend, and also a lady, she's at home with her infirm mother. Well, between you and me, Nozer. I mean, do you mind if I call you Nozer? Yes, I do. Uh, I think she sees you as a sugar daddy. <laughs> if she sees me as anything, she sees me as a Renaissance man. <laughs> she thinks you were born 500 years ago. For your information, a Renaissance man is someone who excels in many fields. Ah, oh, in your case, running a news agents, entering competitions, and spying on the neighbours all at the same time. Thanks. Thanks, love. <laughs> Mr. Gordon. Mr. Gordon? Do you mean to persist with this? Oh, yes. <laughs> because I've got your number. It's a bit like 999, like what you died when I had my stroke. If you uh, turn it upside down, hey presto, you've got your number. You think I'm the devil? I'm flattered. You don't frighten me. I know that. Mrs. Uh, Connor and I both think that you paid your crony 
to murder her husband. And you're an old drunk and she's insane. So why should I give a damn what either of you two think? Because it's the truth. Look, I could go to the police, or you and I could come to some sort of civilized agreement. What do you say? I say you're an old boozy loser who nobody respects or particularly likes. No one believed you in the past. Why should they start now? But you know what? It's that time of year when you forgive your enemies and take pity on those less fortunate. And since you seem to fall into both categories, you can take this and count yourself very lucky. I was right then! Don't push your luck. I'm warning you, Gordon. You're not getting off that easy. It's going to take a lot more of these for me to keep your mouth shut. It's a very fetching negligee. Congratulations, Mr. Stone. You're now officially getting in my wick. Was it now? More money. More crackpot hypothesis followed by a drunken, dribbling attempt at blackmail. My, my, you're not as stupid as you look. Do you think it grows in trees, Mr. Stone? <laughs> Listen to me. I'm beginning to sound like my mother. <laughs> it was all going so well for you, wasn't it, eh? I mean, you battered away the police, you swatted them like a fly. If there's nothing to find, no one can find it. Except if you didn't bank on me. Do you think my bunging you a few quid is an indication of some sort of guilt on my part? That's exactly what I did think. Perhaps if you'd cooperated, your eviction might have gone more smoothly. That man who uh, came round to bully me on more than one occasion, uh, I saw the same man with you yesterday. I uh, wrote down his registration number. I can tell it to you if you like. Jimmy had nothing to do with this. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you. Now we've got a name and a face. And that pretty little girl who everyone thinks is mad, she's not really mad, is she, eh? Because she knows that you've got someone to kill her husband. I know I know who that someone is. Yeah, and what do I get for knowing all that? A few measly quid. Do you know, if this gibberish had any merit, you'd be down the station, not standing here twisting my arm. I don't want to see you charged, Mr Gordon. I'm not interested in justice. I've got, what, 10 or 15 years left if I'm lucky? No, I don't want justice. I want to be fed, I want to be housed, I want my pride, I want security. Because you... You took my home away. I want some real justice. You stole my self-respect! You'll get nothing more from me. So go to the police. They'll see for what you really are. A sentimental, babbling old fool. I mean, Jed. <laughs> what kind of name is Jed? It's my name. And I will go to the cops. And I'll tell your wife. And I'll tell everyone what you are. You're a coward, Tony Gordon. You're a coward. And you're a killer! And you're not going to get away with it! That's where you're wrong, because I am! Get away with that! Do you really think you come in here and threaten me? Do you think I can be blackmailed? Sucking them lemons, granddad!
So Jed's not dead, baby. Jed's not dead. Quite a situation, don't you think? If you were in my shoes, what would you do now? Just as I thought. Look after number one at all costs. Because that's why you came here, isn't it? To screw more cash out of me. But fortunately, I'm a better man than you. I didn't mean to kill you. I never did. But you pushed me too far. A rush of blood and here we are. I need this. I barely slept. And when I did, all I could see was you turning a nasty shade of puce. And I came in here to discover that my worst nightmare was no such thing. I'd have paid any price to undo what I did. So when you did your Lazarus act earlier, apart from a wee bit of surprise, I felt a great sense of relief. Because you know what, Jed? I feel like Scrooge on Christmas morning, getting a second chance. Because contrary to what you and Maria think, I am not a cold-blooded murderer. Not yet, anyway. For first... You're gonna take this damn stupid thing off my head. Come on, Jed. Where's your sense of Christmas spirit? It's your hat, and I think it looks rather jaunty. Now, as I see it, there are three ways this could go. Shall I? I'm happy for you to do the talking. Well, there's the obvious. I finish you off, and my problems die with you. If you do that, you'll have to look me in the eye and live with it afterwards. If it was the only option, so be it. You still have to get rid of my body. It's not easy. I've got access to construction sites. Deep, deep holes. Loads of concrete. I could give you a list of locations if you've a preferred resting place. Alternatively... Alternatively, you could move above ground into a finished flat. I don't understand. Well, thanks to the vagaries of the economic cycle, I've got a lot of empty properties in my hand. I could give you the keys to a studio, all mod cons. You could live there, rent-free. I'll even throw in a few grand to set you up, provided you forget about our misunderstanding. Why the hell didn't you say that yesterday? I had no reason to then. You were a minor irritation, nothing more. But even if I'd tried shutting you up, you'd have still haggled. Because you're a greedy little man. And today? Well, things have changed. I think we've both explored the alternatives in more detail than we'd have liked. I think it's a very generous offer in your shoes. And cheap at the price in mine. I don't understand. One minute you're strangling me. And the next you're offering me the keys to a new flat. You, you reckon you're Scrooge? I think Jekyll and Hyde nearer the mark. Much as I like spending the afternoon sharing literary analogies with you, the clock's ticking, Jed. It's Carla I want keeping me awake at night, not you. It's as simple as that. Oh, earlier you, you, you said there was another option. Yeah, you accept my offer and then you betray me. And I go to jail for attempted murder. No, 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 I won't. I want my words, my bond. Yeah, but you would say that, wouldn't you? But know this. If you do go to the police, they'll want to know why you were here. And I'll let them and everyone else know about your grubby little attempt at blackmail. You see, we've got to look to the future, Jed. What are you doing? If what are you doing? you've got one. I'm branching out into the removal business. Someone's going to have to collect your pile of miserable belongings. Otherwise, Emily might get suspicious. Well, she will if you go waltzing in there. Why don't you let me go and get them? That's a very good idea. Why don't you just stay for Christmas dinner while you're at it? I'll go. 
unfortunately, Emily and Norris are good Kirk-going folk. They could come back at any moment. You're taking a very big risk. Yeah, you don't have to worry about me, old man. I'll be fine. As for you, I couldn't quite say. You've got a lot to think about. We both have. Sorry for the delay. Best laid plans and all. So, talk to me. Talk? I can't even spit. Come on, Jed. I'm late for dinner as it is. What do you want me to say? Of course I agree. Who wouldn't? Not good enough. If I can't be certain, I'm not so squeamish I won't finish it. There's nothing... I can say that it make you certain. You just have to trust me. But look, I'm not going to gain anything by going to the coppers. It's, it's against my nature, any road. Good. Very good. Now, I've got some studios in Wigan. You can have one of those and, uh, let's say, three grand. Don't haggle. Oh, the, the money's fine. But, but Wigan, I don't know anybody there. I don't want you in my face anymore. I don't want you drunk in the Rovers, letting your mouth run away with you. I don't want to see you again. And I don't want you to tell anyone about this. I'll have to say my goodbyes to Emily. Maybe. In time, if necessary. But not looking like that. Not sounding like that. So do we have a deal or not? Well, how do I know you... You're not going to drive me to some quiet spot and do me in anyway. You don't. You're just going to have to trust me. <laughs> <laughs>